Hey, hey, welcome back into today's video. You guys asked me if we could look into Bobby Burns and just what really happened. So I started watching a couple of videos of Bobby Burns and trying to figure out what really happened. And if you're new here, I like to take a look at uh, YouTubers, break down the scenarios, the controversial topics that led them into the specific situations that they've landed themselves in and look at it from a bridge of compassion. So if you don't know who Bobby Burns is, he is a YouTube star, well known for his film reviews on his self-titled YouTube channel. He achieved further success by creating genre mashing trailers to give beloved movies a different feel. His most popular of those became Frozen was a horror if Frozen was a horror film and then He made this video where he was talking about Shane Dawson. I have a problem with people m manipulating people and not being honest and making terrible 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 Terrible, terrible, terrible content. Hey, what's up you guys? It was a Shane Dawson hate video where he talked about uh, the things that he did not like about Shane Dawson and this pr prompted uh, Shane Dawson to reach out and uh, Confront his hater so to speak on a plane with Jordan and Nathan and we flew out to LA Where we met up with Shane and we shot the collab at his house. Okay, right. how are we doing? We're here and I'm about to go down and meet Shane Dawson. All right, let's go do it Enjoy. Okay. We'll be up so he's obviously nervous and I don't think there's anything wrong with collaborations among youtubers, but there is a certain uh, level I think that we all operate on and this is this might be idealistic but what I mean is I've thought this for a while that no matter what we do the amount of content and production and effort that we put out into the universe is directly reflective to the amount of uh, income that we produce the the amount of uh, traffic that we produce and the amount of followers that we have what I mean by that is I think in my mindset that money is a measurement of how much value that you give to the world. And I think that at the current level that I'm at and growth rate that I'm at, and the more I learn, the more I, I become and the more I grow because there are steps to everything, the bigger that I'm going to get. I personally am uh, pretty excited about the growth rate that I've had, but I feel like a huge collaboration on this caliber would be too much and too big of a step and too much growth. I think I would have taken the collaboration, but I would have not went so far with what he did and went on Shane Dawson's channel and been so overwhelmed like he did. What I'm trying to say is that I think it's really important that we understand the steps that are involved here and the steps and the progress do vary from person to person and it seemed like he was already nervous and he looked like he was a little bit obsessed with the numbers. 20,000 subs right now. Fuck. This video, he just posted it. He yeah, did a link, link right to there. the channel right there. Subscribe to Abby's channel because he's cool. And I like him. So it's 165,000 views, 4,800 comments so far. What are the likes to dislike? 22,000 likes to 80. And 10,000 followers. And on Twitter, we have 52,600 followers. I understand that being a YouTuber, you do want to watch your analytics and you do want to keep up with your numbers and everything like that. But I think that. Uh, there's a healthy amount that you want to pay attention to this and uh, I, I myself have been caught up in it like uh, when I did a uh, piece for CBS Inside Edition this year I've learned that there are specific things that happen throughout your career that are going to give you a boost in subscribers and it's it's kind of like what they talk about in YouTube as relevancy um, trying to stay relevant and chasing the analytics it, it can be really exhausting but if you already if you keep in mind the mindset that uh, this is going to give me a, a bounce in subs and then it's going to go back to a casual number the key is I feel to be successful is to work at your pace not compare yourself to others and understand that everybody has a different uh, way they go about things and do your own thing but this leads me into bobby burns taking a job offer i guess a dream job offer from shane dawson all the shit that i've always hoped would happen to me like youtube wise is starting to happen and it's the strangest feeling ever and i don't really know what to do with it um it's so unbelievably exciting it's so unbelievably exciting and i have so many ideas and so many things i want to do and so many places to go so i'm not like stuck 
it's just crazy. It seems like he just wasn't ready for this and he seems completely overwhelmed. I think this is because he never learned how to maintain his channel. Uh, that's really important. Uh, I see it a lot. As you can see, there are certain YouTube YouTubers that are like niche, specifically niche communities. Um, they'll, they'll do like, uh, you can see it in uh, Clash Royale, the video game. Um, the, these YouTubers will continue to do Clash Royale videos when it's, it's, it's kind of dying down. It's no longer working for them anymore, but they'll, con they'll consistently do it. There are YouTubers that are over 2 million subscribers that are at, on their uploads only getting a thousand views. And I think this is because they've not learned to maintain. It was the niche uh, community that got them some capital gains, some quick cash, and they never evolved from it. And the I think two specific things you need to be a, sp a successful YouTuber is obviously really good personality and the ability to evolve and never stay the same. I think because Bobby never learned how to maintain at any certain level with his content, uh, he when he was confronted with this huge rise in popularity, he couldn't produce the content because he never was on those levels and it caused him to act out a little bit adversely, a little bit different. And it kind of went against the values that he built his channel on from the start and it, it can be seen a lot currently and almost impossible to process so yeah i guess i just wanted to turn this on to capture how i'm feeling right now maybe i'll cut this into a video update for the channel and i'll probably delete it after a little bit this is pre la and he's just really nice and just really coming across as genuine and fast forward to his current stuff I think this could be Shane Dawson and if and if he was uh, smoking marijuana and just throwing parties and just obscene things like living this type of lifestyle I I don't think it would go well over on uh, even Shane Dawson's channel and it just seems like he's not himself and he's going against his core values. And I think that's a lot of his audience is seeing and that's why, let's check a look at his channel and see how it's doing today. It's in the red all across the boards and that's really sad. Like he's, last 30 days he's lost over 5,000 subscribers. And it's just something I hate to see. He's not doing good on estimated earnings, only about 20 bucks a day. Uh, he, he is literally only making $686 a month, at the very most. Reaching your goals at a really young age can do something really intense to you. YouTube is such a weird place right now. When you get so into it and you're living it every day and you're making the content, it becomes a different kind of life just in your house. You get your work, everything I make, I can just do here. If I don't force myself to go do other stuff, YouTube kind of becomes your whole existence. I resonate with what he said a lot. Um, when I first started making videos, it was like February 26th of last year. And it was right out of the hospital. I was in a, a horrific accident and it was really bad. And uh, I couldn't walk. And literally it was at a point in depression where I couldn't got no worse. And I decided I was gonna make videos. So I started making videos, made everything better. Um, and it was easy then. And you think, well, I'll just do daily videos. And I made daily videos every single day. The grind was real. Uh, and I just kind of always kept it up. And it's easy to do it for a month. It's easy to do it for two months. And then you get in a year and then you're like, wow, this is this is a grind. And then going on two years now, uh, the grind was so much. Like you get so caught up where YouTube becomes literally everything. You have to make yourself get out of the house or you'll go insane. And uh, I, was, I was hospitalized like three times in the past year and a half. For exhaustion and you know you, you might think oh, how in the heck because he, he's just sitting here and he's editing there's a lot that goes into these videos guys like I have uh, no help on these things these videos my videos are at a high production I'm the only one that edits these videos I do the research research can take anywhere it's from days to a few hours 
editing the videos, it takes anywhere from four to 12 hours. And it, if you're doing all this by yourself every single day, in the past year and a half, or so that I've been doing this, I might have missed maybe 15 days of content. And those times that I did miss content, I was probably hospitalized uh, for exhaustion. And when I do go to the hospital, it's like my mental health has, is was eroding away at such a horrible pace. And it's, it's getting better now because I am the type of person where if there's a problem, I fix it because I'm, I'm one of those positive law of attraction type people where you you use the power of positive thinking and then you learn to, and overcome and I figure out a really nice schedule and I am writing a book currently that's going to be out sometime next year that's going to be talking about powering through your depressions and anxieties to meet your goals and stuff when you're working in jobs that pretty much you have to consume and immerse yourself in is a better word. Uh, so look forward to that. But I did resonate on this whole conversation where if you are doing this type of uh, work a day in and day out, and even though you're so passionate about it, because uh, a lot of people will say what this girl's about to say. If I hadn't done YouTube, I don't think I would have a lot of these mental health problems. I really truly believe that. And it's it's sad. A lot of people who are outside wa like watching in would be like, then stop it. It's ruining your mental health. It's my passion. I, I, I know nothing else. I would not want anything else is all I've worked for. The thing that makes you the most happy is also making you the most unhappy. And that is that is the case uh, on YouTube and any job that uh, put has demands this sort of level of output and you have to be really strong-willed and you have to have a real passion for it. And I think that's where a lot of people that begin and, and quit, uh, they never had the passion for it. And I would tell anybody that's watching this video right now that if uh, you wanna be successful in something, you better make good and daggum well sure that you love doing it. Because if you love doing it, you don't have to set an alarm clock, the passion wakes you up. If you get a shout out from a bigger YouTuber and you just get like 30, 40, 50,000, uh, subscribers, you might be able to maintain that. But if you end up getting three, four hundred thousand, six hundred thousand subscribers, seven hundred thousand subscribers, you can't just. Let's say you've never made a video in your life, and you wanted, you decided to be a YouTuber, and all of a sudden you woke up in Shane Dawson's body, uh, nineteen over nineteen million subscribers. Uh, you don't know how to do anything. So, your experience, the level that you're at could not keep up with the level and experience that Shane Dawson's at. He knows how to do the editing, how to produce the content, how, how YouTube works, the politics of it, and you do not. You are at the level that you are at because it is what you know. If you wanna be at a higher level, then you grind and you put forth the effort to acquire that higher level. And in Bobby Burns' case, that's I think that's one of the major uh, contributing factors of the decline of his channel. I don't think that he's losing subscribers because uh, he sucks. I really legitimately think that he's losing subscribers that he cannot contain at the rate of effort that he is putting out. And I think eventually he'll get back down around to a level of subscriber count that is something that he can tolerate, something that he can maintain. I don't think he needs to keep pushing himself and doing these crazy things and uh, he needs to probably go back to himself. But I think another contributing factor is the fact that he is betraying his core values. And what I mean by that is, let's just take a look at the video that started it all. I have a problem with people manipulating people and not being honest and making terrible, 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 terrible content. At this point in his career, he was very genuine, very honest, and his audience could feel this, and he was re resonating and connecting with them on that specific level. His channel was growing, and it was doing great. Um, the second Shane Dawson offers him this this deal, it's almost like he sold, he sold out and changed everything that he was doing in his content and going against his core, what his heart wanted. And the second you do that, it's it's not gonna work for you. You cannot succeed by trying to be what everybody else is trying to be. 
you got to be who you are. Everybody asks me, what can I, what can I offer some people that no one else can offer people and give them a reason to watch? Well, you, because no one else can be you and no one else can offer you. So you are always already the content that you're looking for. So. Uh, I hope I was able to offer you something a little bit different than most other people when they covered this topic. Um, but as interesting as this is, there's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right, you guessed it. I wonder what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes. As always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. Uh, I don't think it's over for the. I don't think it's over for the kid. I think that he has room and opportunity to grow, just like everyone else. I think that uh, his subscriber count will level out, and it'll get to the point of which he can maintain at his pace, as long as he stops comparing himself to every other person. And if he keeps on doing that, it'll keep declining. But. Uh, I know that you're repping if you're not repping you're and how do you become a member of the rep squad all you gotta do is subscribe for notifications turned on be in the comment section to every single video because i'm going to be there greg the cat's going to be there and the rest of the rep squad community as well and i expect to see you there too because this channel loves you